Welcome back to another Biostats video. This is going to be a short one, and we're just going to talk about the ROC curve, otherwise known as the Receiving Operating Characteristic Curve. The ROC curve helps demonstrate how well a diagnostic test can distinguish between two different groups, namely diseased versus healthy. It puts the true positive rate in the y-axis, and it puts the false positive rate in the x-axis. Now, you probably already noticed that the true positive rate is practically just sensitivity. The false positive rate, you might be scratching your head. Shouldn't this just be specificity? Well, recall that actually specificity is the true negative rate. If you're still mixed up about sensitivity and specificity, I have a video talking about sensitivity and specificity in detail, and I'll link it in the description and in the video in one of the corners. But let's understand this curve. What this curve is trying to say is that as we keep going up, sensitivity is getting better. As we keep going left, specificity is getting better. If you understand this, you are solid to answer any question about an ROC curve. They mention here that the better performing test will have a higher area under curve, and they call this as AUC. When, we, when they say area under curve, this is what they're talking about. For example, this is the area under this curve that's dissecting the sort of the, the graph in half. When we're talking about this curve, this is the area under it, all of this. And when we're talking about, about this, all of this is the area under this curve. Let me erase all the ink just so that we can see a bit better. So now how do we, how do we understand what do they mean by better performing test? A better performing test in general has a high sensitivity and a high specificity. So these both should be high. The best way you can quickly, quickly see which test is better performing is just by quickly eyeballing the curves in question and just seeing which one covers more space, which which one covers more area under the curve. In this case, if you notice, this curve covers the least. This curve covers a bit more, but this curve covers the most. Therefore, if they ask you which of these three is the better performing test, it is completely this one. To stimulate your thinking just a little bit, how about I give you a question? If I was to throw a coin, which of the following curves best represents the experiment that I'm going to do? You can actually pause the video if you'd like and just think about it for a little bit. I'll give you one more second. Alright, congratulations. If you picked this curve, you're absolutely right. Because a curve that's going perfectly in the middle most likely indicates that specificity and sensitivity are half and half. If these two numbers are half and half, they indicate a test that is half the time going to be right, which is a test that's basically meaningless. It's almost like flipping a coin to see if your patient has a disease or not. Pretty meaningless, right? I'd like to just harp on one last point. Sometimes, instead of saying the better performing test, they'll sometimes throw a curveball at you. They'll tell you which of the following curves best represents the ideal test that we need to use for a screening test. And sometimes they might say a confirmatory test. So what, what's the difference between these two? Well, let's put a point here and a point here. And just for the sake of, of you know clarity, let's say that these were equidistant from each other and that you know this and this are going to have the same area under the curve. I know, I know they don't look like they have the same one, but just for, for the sake of clarity, uh, for the sake of simplicity, let's say they have the same area under the curve. What do you do then? Let's say they were, they were interested in you picking one for the screening test and one for the confirmatory test. Well, I'm going to give you a really, really quick way to do it. When they're saying screening, you want to focus on maximizing sensitivity. You want to focus. You want to put all your bets on sensitivity. So you're going to pick the highest point. In this case, this is the highest point. So this curve, the curve that intersects with this point, is going to be on the curve, the ROC curve, that best represents the ideal test for a screening test. However, this point is going to be best for a confirmatory test because with a confirmatory test you want the specificity to be highest and the only way you can get a very high specificity is by going to the leftmost point. Again, the, the highest point is going to be high sensitivity, but for a confirmatory test you're going for the leftmost point, so you're going to go left. Confirmatory, you're going to want to increase specificity by going left here by going up the highest point, the leftmost point. With that said, you should be good to answer any question about the ROC curve, hopefully. I hope you benefited from this short video. Consider liking and subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching.